Hello everyone. I pray everyone is having a blessed week to start off. Um, as always, I thank God. I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm grateful uh, that God is using me as always um, to be able to share with you guys and um, to enlighten you on uh, the wisdom that he is giving me and so this week i just want to pretty much talk to you about how god has um pretty much given gotten people attention previously in the bible how god has spoken to people how god has using angels to speak to people or uh, how god has uh, in generally spoke through a donkey in particular um and that is one particular uh uh situation i know that some of you guys um have been seeing numbers i'm not myself in particular i am not familiar with seeing numbers i have never experienced that myself um and because some someone had uh questioned me about it uh, I had to lay out on the floor and uh, pray about it uh, personally. And, you know, I had to ask God about it because, one, I, I can't be like, listen, I know everything because I don't know everything. And if I don't know something, then what better person uh, to find the answers? Because, first of all, God is the person that you go to for answers that you don't know, right? You you go to him. He's going to build it through you, through his spirit, right? So, because he tells you in, in James 1.5, uh, he says, he tells you, let's just go there before I even, um, if, if, if anyone lacks wisdom, ask God. He, he gets it to you, right? So... If you're lacking wisdom and you need understanding, don't go to man. Ask him. Who give it to you? He gives you the wisdom of understanding. God gives it generously. If you go to him, do not doubt. He's gonna give you. He's gonna give you exactly what you need. Because everybody has their own interpretation of everything. You know. And one thing I have have to say, just because one person gets one interpretation of the Bible, that does not mean it's wrong. Because each person learns according to their faith. A person might be in new beginning faith. Or everybody has a different level of faith. So I might read the scripture and get one interpretation of it another person might read the scripture and get a different interpretation of it that does not mean that their interpretation of it is wrong that does not mean my interpretation of it is wrong each person has a different understanding of it because they're at a different level of faith in it you get your true understanding from the holy spirit who's ultimately your teacher but you cannot twist the word of God. That is always going to stand the same. Now, if you try to, to change the wording of it, that's a whole totally different thing. So, here we are. James 1, 5, okay? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give to all men liberally, unbraideth not, and shall be given him. And so we go over to the amplified version if any of you is deficient in wisdom let him ask of the giving god who gives to everyone liberally ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding and it will be given him be given him so and then you know it goes on you know if you if you read on uh further on all the way down to uh and 
uh, six. All the, well, if you really just go all the way down to, I always go down to eight. And and the reason why I go down to eight because it it goes down. If you read eight, it says a double minded man is unstable in all his way. And, and and the reason why I read that part because usually a person who is double minded they are unstable. They're going to be hot and cold with their faith. One minute they're, oh, I love God. I trust God. I'm, you know, I trust. And then the next minute they're crying. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is it, you going to trust them or you're not? It is what it is. And so if, when you're reading that in uh, the Amplified version, it's sort of, been, for being as he is, a man of two minds, he, he hesitating, hesitating is correct. He is unstable, unreliable, uncertain about everything. He's he, he thinks, feels, and in, 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 what he thinks, feels, and decides. He's just very unstable. Just not a person that you can rely on. And so, and then if you look at seven, I'm reading. Up, I'm reading downwards up. So if you look at seven, for let not the man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So, and then if you, well, let's, I shouldn't read upwards because this is not going to make sense unless I'm reading downwards. So if you read in, so let's just go back. Let's read from five downwards because it's going to make more sense that way. I'm sorry, y'all. This is just not the proper way to be reading that. But, it, and I shouldn't start off this way anyway. But uh, let's just go back up. It says, if anyone of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. That give to all men liberally and unbraided not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that waveth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. So it's like what the waves do. You you hear, then you're there. You hear, then you're there. You hear, then you're there. That's how you use. That's how your faith is. It's like this. Oh, I'm here. We got. No, I'm over here. No, I'm here. I'm there. No, that's not how your face is supposed to be. Your faith, you want your faith to be stable, right? That's how you want your faith to be. So, yeah. So, it's like, look. Either you're going to be stable, because if you're not, if you're going to be like that wave here and there, you can't expect nothing for God. For let not the man think that he shall receive anything from God. So, if you're going to be like this wave, you ain't getting nothing from God. Basically, okay, clearly, if you're going to be like that wave, you ain't get nothing, basically. You ain't get nothing. So get it together. Have faith in God. Or be like the wave. And I don't like being a, have you ever been in the ocean? I don't like the waves. I like when the ocean is smooth. Because when the ocean, this was not even one of the ones I was going to use today, but since I got there, I was there, might as well use it. The ocean is not fun when you're being tossed. It's not fun at all. I would stay at the shore. Because it can take you farther out. That's what the waves do. So, anyway, so with the um, like I back to what I was saying. I don't know about the numbers. I've never seen them. I've never had God get my attention that way. One because usually when God deal with me, I, I can hear God's voice. God speaks to me. Uh, I don't have that issue where I don't hear God's voice. Um, he speaks to my heart. Uh, he sh he uh, shows me things. Uh, like, he has a way of showing me things. And uh, when I'm reading things, he has a way of showing me things. Uh, uh, when I'm listening to people preach, he has a way of pointing things out to me. Or if I'm asleep, he'll... 
give it to me in my dreams. He'll give me something that I don't listen to. Like probably I could listen to something over a year ago. He'll bring that thing back to me. I can listen to something weeks ago. He'll bring it back to me. Some that somebody was preaching on, he'll bring it back to me. Like God has a way that he, he reveals things to me. He probably done did it to you. And you probably don't even realize that that was God giving something back to you. And he probably done even brought something up that somebody done said something to you. He probably done even spoke to you through somebody. And you probably didn't even realize that that was God speaking to you. And you just like blew it off. Like they, you know, was getting a little bit too deep for you, but that was God sending you a message and you probably just blew it off because you wasn't trying to really hear them. But God has ways that he speak to you, speak to you. And sometimes when they touch you, you know, that's God. So yeah, that's just usually how God speaks to me. So, um, on that number thing. So when I was praying and, um, you know, I was crying out for marriages as I always do. But yesterday was like really intense for me. And, um, I, I don't know. Um, somebody marriage just probably got restored yesterday behind that, that whole little episode yesterday. I don't know what, what was going on. Uh, I, I, I never know, uh, as an intercessor, but sometimes it can be, uh, um, an intense moment. But one of the things when I got up and, uh, God, allow me to see um somebody that i normally listen to they have a whole article that i'm gonna share um in this uh the link to in this video uh, uh below this video about these numbers that they did in 2015. this article if you google this article you can find what these references of these numbers that you guys are seeing are for. God gave them these references of these numbers years ago. Now, it's a lot of people that are on um, YouTube prophesizing uh, that are not prophets. And they are prophesizing under the spirit of, of uh, divination and the python spirit. Uh, a lot of... Um, prophets if they have not went to school and they have not sat under the ministry to prophesize no they're not prophets of god i'm sorry you have to be trained to be a prophet i'm sorry i'm not about to sit up here and say i'm a prophet of god and i ain't went to school for it listen i have went to a christian school i did not study to be an intercessor i am a prayer i'm a prayer warrior you can pray. You can go to you can go to school. You can, you can pray and be a prayer warrior. You don't got to be trained for that. You study the Bible. You pray daily. The, the Holy Spirit can teach you to do that. But when it comes to being a preacher, a prophet, though uh, apostle, you need to be. You need to go. First of all, you need to go to school to be trained to do that. Because first of all, you need to know who you hearing from. Because just as God gives gifts, so does the enemy. And we all know this. So you need to know who you prophesizing from. And see, um, I, I do not play when it comes to stuff like that. And God will put you in order uh, when you, when you, first of all, when you are one of his. He, your spirit is not going to agree with something that is not from him. And when somebody is doing something that is not from him. So therefore, I have unfollowed a few people because what they were doing was just not setting right with me. Because I'm like, where were you ordained to do this? Because anybody can get a ministry license offline. But how many, how many years did you go to school to learn to do this? And who did you sit under to learn to do this? That's my thing. We all can do Bible study together. There's nothing wrong with that. We can all pray together. There is nothing wrong with that. 
But when I, I'm not about to sit up here and pretend that I am something that I am not. I will not mislead a child of God. It is wrong. And you got to answer for that. You have to answer for that at the end of the day. So I just wanted to get that off my chest. So with that being said, this is what I got for y'all today. I love y'all. I love God. And I'm going to speak the truth and shame the devil. <laughs> okay. So this is what it is today. Let's talk about Sal. Saul, who, look, the formerly known Saul turned Paul. Who was on the slaughter of God's children until he was met on the Demarcus Road, right? Acts 9. Yep. We're not about to go. I'm you know what? I'm not even gonna go like deep into the Bible today because y'all need to read this. Go to it yourself. I'm giving I'm giving y'all the word today. Acts 9. Go to it. 1 through 43. Y'all need to read that. He was prosecuting God's people. He was pretty much executing them. Just like God met him on that road. Why are you prosecuting me? You're prosecuting God. The same way we are being prosecuted by our spouses. Yep. And every one of those people who are against us with them. God gonna change their hearts. Watch what God do. He gonna do it. Yep. So yeah, God spoke to them. He sure did. God spoke to I mean, he, he God gonna speak to He is gonna speak to them. But yeah, God spoke to him. Just like God changed Saul to Paul. God gonna change. Your kingdom, your 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 uh your husband and your wives to kingdom spouses. Yep. They are going to come into the salvation of God. I declare and decree it. Yes, I do. Mm hmm I sure do. All right. So next we're gonna we're gonna talk about the donkey. Yep, the donkey. That's another one in the Bible. Numbers 22. Yep, y'all need to go read that. Yes, that was with the, uh, I think I need to go to that because uh, that was a ba Balak, ba that was Balaam and Balak. Uh, that's when um, he was trying to get him to go curse the people and God said no. So God said no, that he could not curse them. And uh, <laughs> when he was trying to go and do it and God, look. God wasn't playing. God done spoke to the donkey. Like, uh-uh. Nah, bruh. Why? No. When God need to get your attention, he gonna do whatever God... What well, he gonna do it. The way that God gotta get our spouse's attention. Look, he gonna do it wherever he gotta do it. If that means he gotta get your attention through numbers, um, through the radio, through uh, your kids, through, uh... <laughs> so let me tell y'all something even through your grandkids who yeah, whoever got grandkids let me tell y'all something you don't get it through your grandkids and um this past sunday uh i had my husband my me and my husband because when i married him his his youngest daughter became mine too, so I get our youngest daughter son every other weekend, and so as I am in my whole prayer and worship moment, he's right there along with me. Now, listen, his mama's not she is of this world by far, so <laughs> he this. Praise and worship music is not before what he's used to. But he just got in the moment right along with Nana. Because he calls me Nana. 
And he's like, okay, so this is what we doing, Nana. So he learned one of the little uh, verses to the music. So he learned because he's two years old. So he learned, um, he le what, what was it, the course that he learned of the music? Um, the glory of God. So he learned the glory of God and that he just kept on singing that part of the glory of God to, 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 to the glory of God. He said, the glory of God, the glory of God. And he just was singing it. He's just saying, so now he ready to get up on that a bit. And normally I would tell him no, cause we don't drop on the bed. But at that moment, it was all go. You listen, if we're going to glorify God, then all right, come on, get on that a bed. Let's go. We're going to glorify God together. So that moment in moments like that, when a child is, you know that their their mom or their dad is is uh not in the walk with Christ and you're praying for their salvation as well. It's all go with Nana over here. So yeah, that's just a moment. That was a moment that I, I just I adored that whole little moment with him. But I said God God gonna use that baby. I, I had no doubt about it. God will use that baby in the midst of everything that is going on. But uh, yeah, yeah, just like God used that donkey, God can use that baby even in the midst of everything that is going on in my situation. And God can use the children that is in the midst of your situation. So use your use those prayer the the, the worship music because those babies worshiping God in the midst of of your spouses in the midst of those atmospheres. You'd be surprised what that can do in those situations. Yeah. Expose your children to the prayer and worship music. Let them see you worshiping God. Don't do it behind closed doors. So they'll do it with you. All right. So, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. The angel of the Lord, uh, when he wanted to put Mary away. And that was in um, Matthew 1, 20 uh, to 21. Uh -uh. Nope. You can't put her away. This is destined. A child must come forth. Yeah. Yep. When God needs something to happen. It's, it, it's gonna come forth. Those are the promises of God. That's faith. Faith that work and His promise. And then we can't forget Mary. If it was not for Mary, conceiving, we wouldn't have mercy. We wouldn't have grace. I mean, grace, grace. We wouldn't have grace. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have it, it, uh, redemption. We wouldn't be able to have marriage restoration. We wouldn't have salvation. We wouldn't have prosperity. We would not have rest. We would not have peace. We would not have faith. There would not be a I. There would not be a you. Get into these miracles. Get into, like, just build your faith on these things. So, one thing that really just grasps me uh the last thing that he gave me and I and it's so with Abraham the father of many nations <laughs> yeah the father of many nations so um we would <laughs> when he was talking about Abraham and Sarah so you know how uh uh, uh, God had told Abraham and Sarah uh, that they were going that Sarah was going to conceive a baby a year later and she chuckled and uh, like she was too old to have a kid and they, they didn't believe she didn't believe it 
they got a doubt. Excuse me, y'all. And so their doubt allowed Abraham to lay with with the maids, right? The maid, the maid woman, right? So we're in Genesis 18. That out. I mean, the chuckle, right? That's Genesis 18, 10 through 15. That's that whole little situation right there. Let me go over to uh, Genesis 21. And so, so and then Genesis 21. Here it is. She has the son because he told her a year later, around this time, you're gonna you're gonna have a son. So she had that son, and you know this is the time. Sarah's happy, but here it is. Abraham kind of not so happy because now he's. He's worried about the son of Hagar. What's happened to him? Right? Because now you don't have the son with your hands made, right? The, um, what a bond woman or hands made or whatever you want to call her. And so. God told him, don't worry. I'm going to make him a nation of his own people. And that's grace from God. One, that's not just grace. That's, a, that's God's mercy at work. And that's God's grace. It's like, look, even though you dis, even though you did not have faith and trust me, and you did opposite of what I told you to wait on me. I'm still going to honor that seed that I did not tell you I was going, that was going to be a son of nations, right? And he's still going to be a nation of his people. He didn't say of your people, of his people. So when... God revealed that to me and I got the, you know, question him about that. It's like, listen, like this, when you're dealing with our marriages and how God is going to restore, you got to look at it like this. Those spouses that are in a doctor's state and they're in a doctor's state with another woman or another man you gotta forgive because that's that's first of all forgive them have grace to say lord i pray you bless them with a spouse of their own you want to, god to bless them financially you want god to heal them because they're going to be hurt too we're hurt. look at it we hurt they're human they they deserve to be loved Regardless to the fact, we're all, we're all God's children. We are all God's children, and and great. We all deserve grace. We all deserve mercy. And we all deserve salvation. No matter what it looks like, we all deserve it. No one is undeserving of it. We all deserve it, and that's that's what it is, and that's how we have to look at it. And I know that's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. Because no, nobody want to look at it like that. And if you can't look at it like that, you're going to be stuck for a long time. And this is your reality. God is trying to get you to a place where you can walk in love. And love says, I hold nothing against you. I hold absolutely nothing against you at all. I hold no accounts of no wrong. God says he will honor your marriage. You can 
restore. He can heal. He can make whole. But can you forgive? Can you love? Can you let go? And walk in love. Because that's what it is. He can do all things but fail. But the question is, can you forgive? Can you let go? Can you truly be a new creature in I mean a new creation in him where you can love all? Where you can forgive all. Because that's the question. Because honestly, when you are in him, there's no more you. There is absolutely no more you. You are in him and he is in you. There's no room for I. It's just you and him. And that's where you need to be at. God is love. And that's that's what I have for y'all today. Like, it wasn't really, like, that, that was it. It just was just showing you that that's who God is. What I said, I will do. This is how I show you myself to you. This is how, I, what I said is what it is. If I told you I'll do it, I will do it. Now, will you believe me? Are you willing to trust me? Are you willing to let go? Are you willing to forgive? So, that's all I have for y'all today. Like, And also, know what you're allowing in. Because ultimately... You want to always be a light of who he is. You don't want anything to block your breakthrough. Like I can take, like I can taste, <laughs> I can taste the breakthrough. That's how, that's how I feel. I can taste the breakthrough, and and and, and know this: everything that is happening is not meant to share with everybody. Like I had to realize. Something that happened and it's not for me to share with every, everybody was a trigger for me to see that I can't tell everybody everything that God is doing. Because the minute that you reveal things to people, some people are praying against you. Some people are monitoring your the things you're doing. Because they're wanting things to not work out for you. So, sometimes it's, it's, it's better to get quiet and not say nothing. Because I realized one thing. The minute that I stopped talking, the minute that I stopped saying things people I haven't been talking to, it's starting to contact me. Why? Hmm. We haven't been talking. So why are you contacting me now? We haven't talked in over a year. Hmm. You'll find that out. Get quiet. I need you to get quiet. Focus on him. And you'll see stuff start to change. And you'll see the enemy try to use people you ain't talked to in years. Because he's... He's trying to break. God's trying to. First of all, when the enemy start using people you ain't talked to in years, you know you got a breakthrough on the way. Just know that. The enemy knows when you got a breakthrough on the way. The enemy knows when his his, his the things he's doing is no longer effective. So with that being said, start thanking God for your breakthrough. Because it's on the way. And it's coming. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is of this world. (sighs) 
I thank God for y'all time. I thank God for using me. I thank God for his wisdom and the understanding. I thank God for his faithfulness because he is worthy and greatly to be praised. And I just thank God for continuing to pour into me and using me the way that he chooses to use me so that I'm always giving you his wisdom and that it's all of him and none of me always because I always want to be a light of who he is for you guys. And, and one thing I want you to, to understand Every time this is advancement in your life, expect for the enemy to give you a fight. You ain't going to get no advancement without a fight for the enemy. Trust and believe that. So. Y'all. It is well. It is well. Like every day. Declare your breakthrough is here. Declare you are the righteousness of God. <laughs> Declare your marriage is God. Your home is God. You are God. Your children is God. Your husband is God. Everything belongs to God. Declare it in the atmosphere. Because we are all are His. Everything is His. We are His. We are. We are light of who He is. So with that being said... Lord, I just thank and praise you for who you are. Lord, I just thank you for the marriages that has already been restored. Lord, I thank you for the marriages that are being restored. Lord, I thank you for the ones that you're going to restore. Lord, I thank you for the wisdom of understanding. Lord, I thank you for being a supplier of all your children need. Lord, I thank you that you'll never leave any of us lacking anything, Lord. Lord, I thank you for provisions that are already being made available to us, Lord. Lord, I thank you that those who who um, struggle with their faith, Lord, that you'll continue to increase them, Father God. I thank you for, for the overflow uh, of your anointing pouring out on us, Father God. I thank you for unleashing your warring angels to, to fight our battles for us, Father, because you said we don't we would never have to fight our battles father god all we have to do is stand and hold our peace father god and father god i just thank you that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper father god and and lord i thank you that even right now that you know the plans and purpose that you have for our life plans to prosper us and and plans to not harm us but to give us an expected ending and father god everything that the enemy meant for our bad lord i thank you that you have already turned it around for our good lord i thank you for performing miracles in the earth and in the atmosphere father god and i thank you for the wisdom that only you can give father god and lord i thank you that even right now god that you are healing the children in the homes father god that have uh, been affected uh, by what the enemy had did because the enemy came to kill still in the struggle god you came that you may give life and give it more abundantly lord i thank you for doing it for your children lord and lord i thank you for everyone who he have um have uh, uh chose to uh, send my way for me to pray for him lord i thank you that we are constantly uh, uh going before you uh every morning and every night for them in prayer um and i thank you for the people that you have uh I have connected me with to continue to pray for them, Lord. And I, I thank you that, Lord, that there will be no um, nothing lacking concerning their households, Father God. I thank you that you are the God that in the possible and there is nothing impossible for you, Lord. And I have great expectations when it comes to your children, marriages. I declare and decree that marriages will be restored from the east to the west and the south. And nations after nations, marriages will be restored. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, y'all, <laughs> I declare and decree that husbands and wives will be returning home. I declare and decree that we are going to have sevenfold returns of love happiness joy peace uh, financial blessings 
all that was taken is going to be restored <laughs> in Jesus name. I seal it with the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and it is so. So y'all have a blessed rest of the week. <laughs> God is good and greatly to be praised. <laughs> y'all, I'm so excited. I don't even know why I be excited, but I do know why. Because God is good <laughs> and the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah, just get some God. Just get some God. He's just so good, y'all. I love y'all. I love God. May He continue to strengthen y'all and uh, just wait on Him. All right, bye, y'all.